Hello and welcome to the third episode in my Unity development log series for Colonize. Today we'll be looking at extending the graphical user interface, providing some options when clicking on the different planets, and a little look at turn structure and the sort of resources that can be used throughout the game. Before we get into the bulk of this devlog, uh, there are a few changes that I made since the last video. Uh, for a start, the procedural planet, I had multiple prefabs before, which was not very um, efficient. So I've changed it now to be one prefab that holds a number of different meshes. Uh, you can see I also added some new meshes. There's planet 1, 2, 3, and 4 at the minute, aiming for 10 still. Uh, and then it just randomly determines once you get into the script for the procedural planet which of those meshes to use the same way that it was for the materials and the sizes before uh, so you can see here in the game world there's a couple of new ones there's this planet here with the bridges um, this one was there before and this new one with like the lake in the top with the mountains which looks quite nice in the, the lava material uh, you may have also noticed this other planet this will be a metal filled planet and eventually once the ships are in the game uh, we, you'll be able to colonize it it's the first planet that you'll be able to colonize in which case it will get some bands around it uh, i've already done the model for that somewhere here you can slightly see these golden bands around it uh, and that will mean it produces metal every turn you probably also noticed that i spiced up the gui a little bit rather than just having the standard gray boxes by creating my own graphics in fireworks uh, that can be seen down here with the selectable planets and also along the top row here with the different resources being shown and the turn count. Uh, so these resources are going to be used to manage how the player navigates the game. It's a turn-based strategy game, so once a player's turn's finished, they will have to pass on to the next turn, in which case the AI or enemy players will then take their turns and eventually gets back to the player. Uh, so this first one here is the amount of actions the player has. You can see there when I hovered over it, I also created a tooltip, which I'll go over in a second, how I did that. Uh, and then there's metal, energy, and gas, which are the three main resources that will be used in the game. Uh, I also created this little cross symbol to get rid of which item is being selected, just the same way as via pressing the escape button before. So the tooltip is just a simple prefab that holds an image and a text component where we will put the text of the tooltip itself. Uh, you can also see this new font that I've added because Arial was a bit of a, a wash, you know, you need to get some individuality and this is the font I decided to use for our game, found on the font, I believe. It's a free online font. Um, so to instantiate that, we have certain things in the UI such as this little actions marker here and you just use the event triggers which is built-in event system within Unity and say when you hover it, call this function and this function is part of the game controller script which says instantiate the prefab that I just talked about and then uh, set its text based on the name that we passed in and then that name gets passed over to the tooltip script which is just a simple switch statement uh, which depending on what name we passed in sets the text of the tooltip and also the size of the box may be wondering where those stats in the top bar are actually coming from and I created a new class called player to manage this. So it keeps track of the current actions, metal, energy and gas a player has and how much they're earning per turn. Uh, it's also got a reference to the game control because most of the scripts in this program need access to the game control. Uh, a list of the ships that player owns and when it's finished loading we can kick the relevant functions in the game controller. So it has a function to add a new ship which is just adding it to this list whenever a new ship is created. Uh, it can govern the new turns, it has some initial things to start off with, so the actions per turn a player starts with at the beginning of the game will be three, and this can be increased via adding living quarters and such. Uh, also changing the basic resources, set, checking to see if the turn has ended, uh, aka if they've run out of actions and there's nothing left they can do. And then just some other stuff that can be used to see if they have enough actions left to do a specific... Um, task or if they can pay to create a new ship or building or whatever it is. I then created some button prefabs and every selectable object in the scene has this little list of buttons uh, that are added to the GUI when that object is selected and then to determine which buttons they have we can set them in the relevant scripts for each object. So here in the home planet you can see I've dragged over the gain metal button, gain energy button and the build button and then in the script for home planet 
when it launches up. It's just populating the selectable list with those buttons. And then in Game Controller, when that object is selected, it will place the buttons on the screen, meaning we get the end result of something like this, with a slight offset being added. Uh, and these buttons are used for different actions in the game. So every planet will, every planet and every ship will have potential actions once you own it. Uh, for example, here, the home planet has the option to spend an action to gain one metal, spend an action to gain one energy, or to open the build menu, uh, which hasn't been created yet, but will be soon. So spend an action to gain a metal. You can see that the actions go down and the metal goes up. Same for the energy there. And once again, for the metal one. Uh, so now I have no actions left. The turn is over. There's nothing else that I can do as the player here. I would hit the next turn button, at which case any AI or other players would act. Uh, at the moment, there's none in the game, so it's just going to go straight back to my turn, refreshing with three new actions and allowing me to do the same things again. One final thing I implemented at this stage was a simple error message that can pop up when you try and take an action uh, that is unavailable to you. So for example, if you don't have any actions left when you try to click one of these buttons, the error message just flashes up that you have not enough actions remaining. The same thing will happen if you're trying to build or create something that you don't have enough resources for, and it will tell you whether you don't have enough metal, energy, gas, or actions, whatever the error is. Uh, this could also be usable by any other errors that might need to pop up during the course of a game, such as trying to target your own ships, I guess, or weird corner case scenarios that need to be addressed. And that's all we've got time for in this episode. Next time we'll be looking at this building menu, uh, which I just made a start on, but at the minute there's no information on it and it's not being dynamically populated. Uh, but this will be filled with the different buildings that you can create on each planet and the costs and so forth of what they do. Uh, but thank you, I hope you enjoyed, feel free to subscribe, hit like, comment, leave any feedback, and I'll see you guys next time.